I'll get shit done. I have fun. It's my time and I'm the one. I'm breaking through. Hello and welcome to another session of the Business Renovator. Today, I'm really excited. It's the last Friday of February. That's not why I'm really excited. I'm really excited because I got a good friend of mine from a place that's far, far away from me. And they got as much snow as I do. But what I'm really excited about is we're going to talk and share some ideas that will help you win more customers. Isn't that exciting? I think it is. Hope you do as well. But before we jump into that, let me do a shameless plug for my business coaching, which is powered by uh, the one and only Brian Tracy. Welcome back. Hey, if you ever had a question around business and you wanted somebody to run a question, uh, get an answer uh, for that question, it might be something around, I don't know, time, team, money, uh, exit strategy or succession planning or anything related to the challenges you're having around business. Well, I'm one of a couple of a hundred around the globe. And if I don't have the answer to your question, I'm sure I could find somebody to be happy to have a little bit of time with you. There's no credit card re uh, required. If you're interested, just uh, shoot me an email at phil at coachfield.ca. Okay, we got the business done. Let me kind of do my introduction of my friend. Um, that's going to help me share some ideas that will help you win more customers. So, um, you know, I'm just going to ad lib this. What I know about this wonderful guy is uh, he's got an interesting haircut and you can ask him why if you uh, pop in and then we'll share the reason why he's done it and why he's done it is the right reason for doing it. And it looks good on him too. Um, but he's gone from, I believe, a carpenter to a guy who creates t-shirts, but he does more than create t-shirts. He helps you show up in a way that's meaningful to the people you care, care about and serve. And he's uh, in a, I think he said a foot of snow and he's in a place just, uh, southeast of Boston, I believe, and I can really say his name, and his name's quite popular because people are stealing it all over the world. There's a company, the same name in the UK. Can you believe that? Hey, I'm going to bring him up. Ron Goodwin, welcome to the Business Renovator. <laughs> good morning. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you again, buddy, and uh, share some ideas, and maybe there's one or two things that may, uh, others will get from our conversation today to help them uh, get get and win more customers. I hope so. Yeah. And if not, uh, we could come back and try again. <laughs> <laughs> so tell tell the world where you are. I kind of plunked you so, on it. So I'm sitting in my office, and you can see this such a mess behind me. I've had to fade it out. But um, actually, I'm in a small town. That's You had it right. I'm on the coast. Uh, south of Boston. I'm about 20 miles south of Boston. And uh, so that, so I'm about four miles from the ocean, maybe, no, two or three miles from the ocean right now as we speak. And it's, uh, it's a small town, suburb of Boston. Yeah. So I just let them know that there's a lot of water near you. Yeah. Is it, is it Cohasset? Cohasset. You did it right. That's good. That's comes from an Indian word, uh, which is Quanahasa, which means long, long, rocky coast. Ah, so one of the popular places down there is uh, Cape Cod. Is that anywhere near you? Yeah, if you zoom out on that map there, you'll see, keep going, keep going. You'll see it's, keep going. Now push it over the, no, the other way. You want to go down and to the west, yeah. So that's that's headed towards the Cape. 
shrink, oh, shrink, shrink right it there. down a little more. Um, hit the minus uh, symbol. Okay. A couple times. A couple times. There you go. There's oh, it's a mass Cape Cod there. Uh, like there's Boston, and the red dot flag here is where you are. So we have a we have a small boat, and my my daughter wanted us to shoot out and take the boat across Cape Cod to out to Provincetown, and uh, we we never got the opportunity to do that, and I I'm afraid we would have missed that hook and ended up in England. <laughs> well, and, and you could have went to work with your uh, subsidiary, right? <laughs> Goodwin <laughs> Graphics in England. Yeah, that's funny. Let's get rid of that for now. Um, so you said you have snow down there, right? You, it's kind of like Canada right now, where at least where I'm at. Not, not all of Canada has snow, but most of us uh, do. Yeah, if you listen to the news, we're like buried, Are buried you? in snow. But you know, <laughs> so I think it, we've got about a foot. Yeah, it's funny how news does that, right? They. Uh, they overstate uh, and make us uh, think it's worse anxious. than what it is. Yeah, anxious. That's a good descriptor. So um, what are some of the things that you would suggest to people in and around winning customers? I think I think the number one one thing, and, uh, and this took me a little while to learn, but the number one thing is to be authentic. And if you have a customer ask you to do something that you've never done before, be straight with them. Tell them up front. I've never done it before. We're, we're willing to try it, but because we've never done it before, I'm not sure, you know, if it's going to be good for me and good for you, but uh, let's give it a shot. If you feel like giving them a shot or you send them away and tell them you, it's not a good fit, but don't ever. So ba back in the day when websites first came out, people would have these big websites and they'd show a tall building with, uh, you know, all these clip art pictures of people sitting around tables and, you know, making it try and make themselves look bigger. And then when the, the potential client shows up at your shop and they realize none of those pictures on your website is you, they would be that they immediately feel a disconnect and they go, Oh, this, these guys are bullshit you know, that's, uh, so I think that's, that's probably uh, number one key. Don't try and project yourself as something that you aren't. And um, and then the number two thing, which I learned from my wife, is uh, listen. My wife's the public health nurse in town, and everybody loves her. I mean, I I I tell her I'm gonna see you know every time we go out, I got to listen how wonderful you are, and. <laughs> And, and one time I said to her, like, what do you tell these people? Why are they so um, attached to you? And she said, well, I listen. I listen to them. And that that's like, if you listen to your customers, they'll typically tell you what they want. Yeah, there's a kind of a hokey sounding little lyric. And it goes, if you see Jim Jones through Jim Jones' eyes, you'll sell Jim Jones what Jim Jones buys, right? Right. And a more corporate white collar way of approaching that would be Stephen Covey's. Seek first to understand before being understood. So your your wife is a sage of the greatest kind teaching you that. That's absolutely true. She is the only mistake she ever made was not doing the research on me before. She <laughs> <did that one. laughs> Yeah, you know, she she followed her heart instead of listening. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a that's another concept we can talk about. You know, people <laughs> buy with the buy an emotion and then they use they rationalize it afterwards why they did it. You know. Oh yeah, totally. Like um, I when I was in a different space, I was in the sales training with another company. Actually, it was a Dale Carnegie franchise here locally, and I was uh, one of the instructors teaching the. Dale Carnegie sales training program at the time. And um, we had an engineer that came in and I think it was about week four or something. And we talked about that concept, about people make, make all of their decisions emotionally and then back it up with logic. And he says, there's no way it's logic. It's logic. It's logic. <laughs> so we were taught not to argue with people because that you just, you'll win the, the battle, but you'll lose the war. And when we want to engage with people and win more sales, you don't want to win the battle and lose the war. You want to 
win the war and help people, right? And serve. Right. So we just let him think that. So I think like a week or two later, he comes back and he's so excited. And he's talking about this algebraic formula. It even had a name. And I was not very good at algebra at the best of times. And he, anyway, he's got, uh, he was so excited, so emotional. And he went, well, you do this on one side and you do this on the other side. And you get here, you get there, you get to the end. And there's no logical answer. I get it. Went, that's fantastic. So he sold himself and convinced himself. And if the person we're talking to says it, it's true. If we say it, it's a claim, right? So supporting what we're offering, like you being authentic, if you show up and have uh, lipstick and mascara on when you're communicating to them, like the authenticity you're talking about, and they show up and they see you with none of that, there's a disconnect, right? The honesty mm. and the trust levels just plummeted. So I really like that you started this out with authenticity. I stole the show. You're the guest. I'm just the host. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your wife is a smart lady. She is. Listening. And the emotional side. And you're right. We back it up with logic afterward. We justify it. I've, have you ever done that where you've bought something, justified it, and then at the end, you're, yeah, I really didn't need this. I certainly wanted it, but I don't need it. But at the time, we thought we did. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Whew. It's not just me. And then one of the things that people do when they'll they'll go to a store and they'll see a product that they say, oh, this is this this would look great in my house. It, I mean, it looks so good here, and this the whole room is all staged and maybe it's a lamp or whatever it is and you bring it home and you put it in your house and it it doesn't look it doesn't look as as wonderful as it did when it was presented in the store so there you go if you get a flat tire on your car is it logic or emotion in buying a new tire that yeah, proves <laughs> But the, what's the emotional part comes in when the when the, when the salesman and I don't even think this is is true anymore. But the salesman says you should get the white wall tires because they look better. That's yeah, the right. And I don't even I don't even know I don't know when the last time I saw a car with a white wall tire. But I remember back in the day that was that was a sign of prestige. So yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's a really, that's a good one. That one we could debate. Uh, I think there's some emotion to it because you're upset because you have a flat tire and you need to get that done. Um, I mean, just, yeah, I don't have the answer. So anybody watching this now or on the replay, shoot us a response to what you think the answer is to that question. That's deep. I like that. Bruce is so deep. He's a creative dude as well. Um, so we have, let's go over that. So be authentic. Listen. Um, remember that at least 90% of what we do is, according to that question, 90% of what we do is there's emotion in it. And um, we back it up with logic. Uh, that's a consist consistent formula. And remember to pay attention to what people are saying, I guess that's back to listening. So make sure we listen. What are some of the other things that you would suggest? So one of the things that I um, mistakenly did for a long time is, so I'm a, I'm a uh, frugal Yankee, which Jeffrey Gittimer refers to as a cheap bastard. <laughs> so I, so using the golden rule, I would think to the customer, well, you want to get the best value. And I would tend to sell them the customer on what I would buy based on value and not, you know, any emotion or as much as little emotion as possible. And, and since I had the knowledge of what to do, you know, this shirt versus that shirt and everything, I could kind of distill it down, say to the customer, this is the one you should get. And they would look at me and say, well, what about those other ones, the, the like the beefy tea? They're so soft and heavy. And I said, yeah, but they cost like a dollar more a shirt. What do you want to spend the extra dollar? And, and what I was sabotaging my own success because I'm like, 
they came here to spend money. Why am I trying to sell them on something that, that they're going to spend less money and I'm going to make less money? So that was a, um, it, it, I got a friend, a mentor of mine told me about the good, better, best model. And once I adopted that, um, it turns out that most people want the better. If you give them the good, better, best model, most people would uh, end up with the better. And a few would end up with the good and a few would end up with the best. But most people went for the better. And um, I'm not re religious about presenting things that way because it's it's really hard to determine like what's what's good. Like when it comes to a t-shirt, like, What's good is what you want, so it's 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 difficult. In the old days, you could say, well, you could go by the weight of the material, but nowadays, that some of the lighter weight material is considered higher end, and and vice versa. So, um, so it's you important that you you do you follow the platinum rule and treat the customer the way they want to be treated, not the the. Uh, yeah, you, you, you rule. And the other rule is the copper rule, What's which is d don't break any laws. Oh, uh, copper, avoid the copper. Yes. Yeah, okay, exactly. cool. <laughs> I'm going to add that into my my uh, arsenal. I'm going to leverage that. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of the platinum rule. And really, people are there. They have their reasons, their own motivations, their own wants and needs. And I think in our role in being authentic and listening is paying attention to what they're telling us and what's important to them. I often use a triplicate of choice, the good, better, best, as often as I possibly can, because it's really not up to me to decide when the sale should end or what they should buy. All I'm doing is providing them with information that's accurate, authentic, and let them pick whatever they want. So when they leave, uh, they're feeling good about the choice they made. Because people don't like to be sold, do they? They no, don't like, like to buy. buy. Right? Anyway. That's uh, that's another great tip, uh, the platinum rule. I and I teach. I've been teaching that now for a whole bunch of years, but specifically the last four, three weeks uh, to six different groups of about ten to fifteen people each, and in, in about that and taking a, a deeper dive into what the platinum rule is uh, versus the golden rule. The golden rule is nice. It's polite. It's not a non-offensive. It's just that if we want to inspire people or help them. Um, going back to listening, what are they saying? What's important to them? Mm -hmm. and do we have something that uh, uh, is a value to them? And if we don't, then we need to go back to what you, I really like how you started with authenticity. If we don't have something that fits, it's not a good fit for them, tell them, just like you said. You know, based on what you're telling me, uh, I don't have what you need. I'm going to introduce you to somebody if you know somebody. And you'd be... But you'd be surprised how often you get the, but I want to buy it from you because I've heard that you do good stuff. And yeah. And that then that way you're you're uh you kind of overcome that hurdle of uh why does this cost a little more than the some other place? It's right. because of all that we bring, you know. And, and you just spoke to something else that's really dear to my heart, and that is when people meet me on the first go around at a networking event, often I'll say, when they ask me what I do, and I says, well, I'm in the business of helping entrepreneurs and business owners stop the insanity in that role. And if they go, okay, how do you do that? Then I'll go into what I do. And if they don't, then I, I don't say anymore. That's it. We're done. And the insanity that I'm speaking about is so what I found is when I have somebody who nods their head, yeah, I'm interested. I want to know more. I'll ask them to confirm if they are a business owner or an entrepreneur. And they go, yes. So, okay, well, you've, you've done your marketing. You've done your promotions. You've got a conversation going with a, a, a prospect. And uh, you've got a really good solution for them. Then you uh, offer up the solution. You present it to them. Show them the options, the triplicate of choice, the good, the better, uh, best. And at the end of it, they say, yeah, I really like this. Can I get it for 30 points off? So, um and when I've offered that up like that, most of the people I talk to say that happens far too often. And that's the craziness. That's the insanity because they think they've got to compete on price. If they got to there, they haven't added the value proposition and um, they haven't got people saying, yeah, no, no, I, it's OK. I want to buy it from you. They haven't earned the right yet. There's more work to be done. A lot of times I think that 
when the price comes up in the conversation and it comes from the customer, it's because they don't know uh, enough about what you're presenting. They don't have, I mean, that's the only thing they, they know, they know price. Yeah. So they can, and, and I think one of the worst things you can do is say, oh yeah, we can do it for less because that, what that does is it sends the message that the first price you gave wasn't real and that it's not, you, you know, you, you pulled it out of the air. So I always, it has a hard, fast rule is we'll never change the price unless we change something about the transaction or either the, the, if, you know, if we we're very busy, we say, Oh yeah, we can do it for a little bit less, but you're going to have to wait two months or, or you're going to have to take a, a color we have that we're trying to get rid of, but you never, um, you never. Sorry, I'm trying change to make your price unless you change the terms of what you're offering. So in this graphic, so this right. so this graphic is from it's from Scott Hull's uh, website. Scott Hull is a he's an artist agent, so he represents different artists. And this is one of the artists that he represents, which his name is uh, Mikey Bolton. And um, it, it's just a uh, the thing we're talking about earlier today was up in the corner there about the pick two, right here. And I learned that from my father years ago. He said, you know, you can't, there's no, there's no magic. If you, you can't have all three. Well, so let's tell the audience what we're talking about there, just in case they can't read it. It says at the top of the triangle is good. Bottom uh, left, looking at it, says fast. And the bottom right is cheap. Um, and what you're saying in this is you pick two, you can't have all three, right? But yeah, and it could be, you could, those three things could be quality, price, and service. Right. Um, th those good, the good, fast, and cheap, are, you know, whatever they call words that mean the same thing. But um, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something that, that I've kind of lived by. And, um, and so one of the, I used to use it to my advantage uh, during the summer months we get really busy and so typically we try to keep our turnaround time less than two weeks but um sometimes we'd run a little bit over that and when the customer would say to me well you know you're, you're running late i would say as long as it wasn't a deadline if it's a deadline we have to get it done and then we do whatever we have to do but um if it was just they wanted it and we we're running you know we we're overwhelmed i'd say well listen there's there's three things is quality, price, and service. And I knew you didn't want to spend more money to get the same good quality shirt you're getting. So the service is going to suffer a little because we're, we're overbooked. And um, once, once I kind of laid it out like that, they, they preferred that. I said, yeah. cause we could always charge you a rush charge and have them done for you by the end of the week. But I don't think that's what you want to do. Right. I'm, I'm going to pop up another Bruce question here. What's he asking? Do you have that shirt in Puce? Yeah, what's Puce, Bruce? Yeah, I don't know what that is either. Thank you. It's a rare color, maybe? Or is it material? I don't know. That shirt in Puce. You're going to look it up. There's some other images that are related in here in terms of winning ideas. It's yeah, actually, actually, Phil, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's a it's a dark brown or purplish pink. There he goes. It's pinkish purple. And is that? Um, yeah, actually, we have that most likely, but we don't call it puce because no one will know what we're talking about. <laughs> Except for you, Bruce. Bruce knew. Bruce knows. So um, tell us a little bit more about putting this all together using this graphic. That you so this this graphic, it's kind of, it's talking about um, when typically when people get T-shirts for their business, they have their logo and they, they throw it on the shirt. And, you know, if it's for the guys that are working, the maintenance guys or whatever, that's, that's a good strategy. But if the shirts are going to be used as a, as a an advertising vehicle, say you're going to give them to your good customers, or 
um, or you're going to have, it's going to be part of a promotion. It's better to spend a little more money up front on the design work and get it and, and have the shirt be something that people want versus just, uh, uh, an advertisement. Cause in the old days when shirts were unique, you could put, you could put your name, phone number, and you know, people would say, Oh, that's so cool. Nowadays, it's not so cool. It's so cool if it has, like, this is a cool image design. And um, there is a lot of clip art out there that people use, and some of it's good, and some of it looks like clip art. Um, but if you spend spend the time up front designing a product that, pe- that someone's going to want, you're going to get a, a lot better response on the end. So... So, for instance, if you came in and said, oh, we have a budget, we want to spend, you know, say $10 a shirt, and we want it to look good, um, and so we, working backwards, we figure, okay, so then the, the artwork's going to be maybe $40 or something. But say if we spend $200 on the artwork or $500 on the artwork, it may draw the drive depending on how many shirts they get it may drive the cost of the shirt up a dollar or two but it drives the value of the shirt up by a lot more than the dollar or two that you spend on the upfront artwork plus you can use the upfront artwork on your campaign and on your website and so it's um i mean ultimately you want people to wear the shirts that you're giving out or selling versus washing their car with them so <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it just makes a lot of sense to do that up front. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that we could extract from here and I'm just looking at the time and I promised to share some stuff in addition to this. So one of the things that this speaks to me about is if you're looking for a quality piece for, um, promotional purposes, then you need to get hold of Ron Goodwin. And I want to, uh, I don't want to ignore this, but just time-wise, is forcing me oh, to do that. Hey, excuse me. Alrighty, thank you. Appreciate you coming out. No Alrighty, he, take care. He has customers and things coming in the snowstorm. But what I wanted to this do is got six out. cases in. This got product in, so he can can't continue on. So uh, you can get a hold of him. Let me go here and try and align this properly. Uh, I can't read my. F- there we go. Let's go here. No, it's this one here. Is that one, right? So there's uh, one way. Th- this is promoting him being on the show today. That's fantastic. And I, I've got a bunch of people that have messaged me. Don't they know we're busy? We're on a show. <laughs> the nerve, right? Anyway, so that's one thing. Uh, Facebook is uh, ron.goodwin.12. There's another place. Look, they popped up on this page too. They're everywhere. Get a, We're busy. I'm talking to Ron. Anyway. Uh, Goodwin Graphics. Now, one of the things I know about him is he likes to bake, but but I don't think he bought, baked these ones. You bought those ones. But if we scroll down here, there, no, it's not here. It's not. I saw some beautiful, beautiful loaves of bread that he had manufactured last night. Oh, that's still that site. No, that's me. It's in here. It's in your uh, the message thing. I sent you a picture of loaf of bread and you asked if i bought it from bimbo that's right <laughs> see if i can find it real quick we were conversing last night oh th- there's some of your homemade bread that's not bought right no so uh funny story my one of my customers sent me a book on she knew that i love to cook and she, and she sent me a book on baking and um and i've never um baked before i was just a cook baking was too was too complicated for me because you had to weigh the weigh the uh ingredients and you have to pay attention to what you're doing <laughs> and um so she but she got me a book it's called uh bread crumbs and it's by a woman named ally and if you do it at alexander cooks alexandra cooks.com You'll see she's got a whole. So her mother um, taught her how to bake bread, and it's a real simple deal. And it's she's there's nothing better than the smell of 
uh, fresh bread being baked in the oven. But Al Allie said she is now a friend of mine and she has a, a kit that I've sent to a lot of my customers that I feel are interested in, in the baking thing. And it has the book, has the jars and the spatula and the scale. And uh, she'll send that out and I'll have her sign the book. And um, if I thought you'd use it, I'd send you one, Phil, but I don't see you baking. But no, uh, I appreciate that. I probably wouldn't use it, but I have a friend who's as much into baking uh, breads and things that I'll tell him about the book so he can go get it. Um, one last thing here is this is your business side of things, RonnieGoodwin.com, and uh, Cotton Feels Good, and you're open five days a week. Yeah, and, and that actually that actually is not a building. That's no. a, it, oh, that's, not, a, not so authentic then. <laughs> no, it's not so authentic, <laughs> but it's retro, you know. So I, the funny story on this is I, I found this picture. This is a, a barn in New Jersey somewhere, and I found this picture online, and I and I doctored it up to, you know, say Goodwin Graphics and Cotton Feels Good and everything. And I had a bunch of postcards made. And then I realized that I was stealing somebody's photograph off the Internet. And and I like when customers come in with stuff they got off the Internet, I tell them, you can't just use that. That's not yours. So I embarrassed myself. And so I sent the woman a note and said, you know, this is this is what I did and this is what happened. And she goes. Oh, no problem. I love it. It looks great. And so, because she wasn't a, a professional photographer, this was something she did for a, a hobby. But, um, so in other words, you got permission. I got permission. And I was, I, but I was sweating it because I was afraid she was going to say, Oh, yeah, you owe me so, five grand. <laughs> so that circles back to how we started the show is to be authentic. So even though you're human and you made a mistake and you caught yourself, and the authenticity core value of yours showed up and you did everything in your power to rectify that. And you did, and now you have the right to use it and yeah. you're, you're back to being your authentic self. So, but I, but I wonder how many people will, will get to this and they'll say, Oh, that place looks a little shabby with the dumpster out front and not realize that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just art. A, an image. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I got that. I knew that's probably not where you were. And Good. I actually quite liked the look of it. I thought it was kind of interrupting and eye catching. So that's the, that was what I was trying to do. So I, I think it, it, it did that. Obviously it did that. Anyway. We're in the, we're in the midst of revamping our website. We've been doing it for five, maybe six years, but well, that's because you're focused on servicing your customers. Right. Of looking after yourself. The cobbler's kids have no shoes. That's right. Yeah, and often the mechanic's uh, vehicles are not as good as the ones he or she maintains for other people, right? Yeah, there's a story about the haircut. If you you go yeah. to a new town and you see a guy has, you know, haircuts $5 and the other guy across the street is $10. And then um, the guy with the $10 he ended up putting a little sign that says, we fix $5 haircuts. <laughs> There's another one, and I'm, I'm, I don't recall what it is, but it's about somebody going to a dentist and the difference between one dentist and the other. And it's the same kind of idea. They don't fix the $5 uh, tooth extraction, but um, there's more value to it. So don't get stuck on price. One of the things that uh, I've learned over the years, and Brian Tracy has confirmed it, and if you ever hear any of his stuff, he says price out of order kills the sale. So the sales process is like a combination log. And if we talk about price to up the upfront part, like you were saying earlier, then we I feel we haven't earned the right to be of service to them. Once people get educated, going back to what you said, they don't know K-N-O-W. They're not saying no, but it's a knee-jerk reaction. And even though I'm a coach and a sales trainer facilitator, if I'm uncomfortable and somebody approaches me too fast, I'll, I will say, no, I'm just looking to back them off, to take the stress away because I feel there's undue pressure being put on me, right or wrong. So um, somebody asking about price. Price is part of the formula, but it's near the end. And we a, need com a common question I get is how much a T-shirt costs? So I have to go and say, well, how much does it cost to go out to dinner? You can go to 
fast yeah. food place so you can go to an elegant restaurant, you know. But um, then they say, well, what's the cheapest shirt you sell? And I say, it's the shittiest one. Why would you want to put your company name on the shittiest shirt we sell? And <laughs> That's there's, there's no magic. It's, uh, it's, it's, go back to those pick two. Right? Yep. And uh, yeah, that was that was really good. No, I was going to ask you what you would want to make sure that people understood, but you just you just did it. So I'm not going to ask you that because it'd be redundant. Well, I always tell them and say <clears throat> you don't want the lowest price; you want the best value. You want to make sure you're getting your money's worth, and we can we can guarantee that you'll get the best value, but we won't guarantee it'll be the lowest price. Yeah, exactly. Well, this has been a blast. We're going to have to do this one more time or two more times over the course of the this year and a little bit maybe next year. Uh, right. If you're open to coming back, uh, it would be awesome. Yeah, as long as it snows again so it's nice and quiet and we can pull it <laughs> off. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, perfect. So hang around and uh, I'll be right back. All right. Well, I, I learned a few things and I was reminded about a few things and I hope you... Uh, Got some value out of this. If you like what you heard, remember to share this out with other people. If you're watching this on the replay, please go hashtag replay and let us know what you liked. If you have a question you ever want answered by a business coach, or if you want to connect with Ron, by all means do that. His information is in here. Uh, you can reach out to him and uh, maybe get him to do stuff for you. Um, yeah, that's a wrap for us today. The last comment I have is remember the you and wonderful represents you. Go out and be your wonderful, unique self that you are and don't forget it with that i'm coach phil we'll see you on another episode of the business renovator i get shit done i have fun it's my time and i'm the one i'm breaking through